Listening to the hour of the time. I'm Pete Les Prince. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a good program for you tonight. Uh, we're going to have another program of sharing uh, information, and I have some things ready for you. So if you have a pencil, pencil and paper, uh, we'll be right back with you. Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have a, another night of uh, sharing information. Uh, I've been doing some thinking on this subject. Uh, we can talk about preparedness equipment, things of this nature, but there's also things that go along with uh, preparedness, and that's sharing, sharing information. Uh, you folks out there that uh, have militia groups uh, that are coming together, uh, Friends and relatives that are coming together, starting to see what's going on. There's a lot of things we can learn from each other. Uh, <clears throat> as I remember when I was a youngster watching my grandmother do a lot of things in the kitchen. Uh, she taught me how to make biscuits, roll bread. Uh, I remember the old uh, white oleo that used to uh, come in a package and you had the uh, little yellow uh, uh, dye pill to make it look like butter. Uh, it seemed like, like both of my grandmothers could always make something from nothing. Uh, all of that, another one to the table because there was uh, always room for one more. Uh, I, I learned a lot of these things from my grandmothers. Uh, they were both good cooks, by the way. I think that's why I got a little bit on the heavy side. But uh, my grandmothers both shared how to do a lot of things. I learned how to sew iron my clothes, my mother helped, 
So things are going to be getting tough again, and we're going to have to resort to learning these things all over again. So you folks, whether you're men or women, there's a lot of us guys out there that are good cooks uh, also. Uh, learn how to cook, share recipes together, how to make things. Uh, biscuits, shortbreads, uh, regular breads, uh, making rice puddings, things of this nature that we'll need later on. Uh, homemade pancakes, because you're not going to be able to go to a store and buy a, uh, a package of ready mix pancakes. Uh, so right now, think about it. Think about sharing with each other what you might know how to cook or do something one way and somebody else might have another way of doing something, put your knowledge together. Mechanics do the same thing. Uh, cross train in uh, learning how to do first aid. Just general home economics, folks, is, is just getting along and sharing and teaching others what you know, and they'll teach you what they know, and we'll be able to come together and whip this thing that's coming up that we're all getting prepared for. So it's not only thinking of buying equipment and things of this nature, just get together. Uh, I've had people call in from the cities and they say, well, how do I learn to do this or make a shelter, uh, build a campsite, whatever. Well, if you're in the city and you're living in an apartment, there's a lot of diagrams in the camp different camping books, survival books, on how to do things. So when you're wanting to put a shelter together, uh, learn how to build a uh, form for a uh, makeshift tent. What's what's wrong with using uh, a roll of thread, some straws, toothpicks, things like that. Build models of what actually you're going to do in the field if you have to. Uh, make a plan. Uh, if you're going to leave the city, if things get tough, how you're going to do it. You can go up on a roof, learn, you can learn your compass work out there. You don't necessarily have to go out in the woods to learn north, south, east, and west. Up on the roofs of your cities, uh, you can use your compass. You can see the stars out there. You can get your land navigation books, compass reading books. And uh, you can learn the stars and navigation from just on your rooftop, your balcony. So really, if you're in the city, folks, it, it's not that hard to learn if you really want to. You can buy your equipment, buy your books, go to your libraries, uh, pull out your different books, go to your health food stores. Uh, they have a multitude of uh, books on how you can eat cheaply, how you can uh, survive, uh, what uh, items or uh, food are good and essential for you. So there's many things that you can do if you just uh, think about it, do a little research, and uh, you'd be surprised what comes up and what you can learn. Uh, think about uh, when you were a youngster, what you learned back then, uh, how your grandmother used to uh, always have that extra nickel or dime to give you to go down to the candy store when things were tough. Uh, they knew how to just utilize their pennies and uh, save it for a rainy day and mine often said uh, here's a little bit now and I'm always going to save some for a rainy day and that phrase has come up many many times well the rainy days are coming and we have to start a saving have to pinch those pennies and make them grow the best way they can and buy the uh, best uh, we can with the pennies and uh, save what we can because if you save pennies here and save pennies there pretty soon those pennies grow into dollars that you're buying something with and uh, not that the Federal Reserve notes are that great but uh, at least you're able to buy something right now so just think about some of these things and and I'm sure it will come together on uh, drying foods, canning, uh, neighbors can get together and uh, learn how to can foods and uh, pack dry foods away. You always don't need uh, nitrogen packed uh, items. Uh, you can use salt for your dry items. Uh, I've said before, spaghettis, rice, beans. Uh, 
any types of pasta, your noodles and such. Uh, pour uh, some salt in the bottom of the bucket. Pour your items in there. Uh, top them off with a little uh, uh, bay leaf and uh, it will get rid of any uh, creatures that want to grow inside, you might say. So uh, these are just little things and I'm sure if you get together with others in your in your groups or other friends that you'll be able to learn uh, these different things. Uh, we're going to have a call in in a little bit and the number will be 602-337-2524. So don't call in now. We'll be calling in in a little while and uh, we can trade some more ideas. Uh, one thing came to mind. I had a gentleman call me on the phone asking me uh, different items that we had pertaining to our preparedness catalog and uh, foods and such. And he said he'd like to come out and see me. I said, well, that's fine. He said, how much would you charge me to teach me how to survive for myself and my family? I thought for a minute and uh, I said, nothing. He says, how come? I says, well, I don't charge for that type of knowledge because it was given to me by learning from others and I was never charged. So how can I turn around and charge someone else to learn how to survive for him and his family? I said, you just come on out here and I'll do what I can for you. Uh, in the meantime, you can get some different books, and if you want to come out a few days, we'll learn together. And uh, every day is a learning experience. Uh, I have learned from others uh, in different ways on hunting, survival, camping, backpacking. I've uh, gained uh, quite a bit of knowledge, and uh, this gentleman was very appreciative of that fact that uh, I wouldn't be charging him for that. That's just something I couldn't do, folks. Uh, I'd be glad to help anybody for the times that are coming. We're all going to have to get together and help each other. And uh, so anybody needs any help that I could give them some advice. I don't know it all. Uh, I always seek information from others. I'll be glad to share it with you. And there's no problem. Also, I wanted to remind you... Uh, for uh, between now and Christmas, uh, Bill has his book, Behold a Pale Horse, on sale at uh, members for $15.50, non-members at $18.50, that's postpaid folks. We also have the ATF and the uh, ADL reports, and those will be shipped to you postpaid at uh, $10. And make your checks out to Annie. A-N-N-I-E and send them to the Intelligence Service at Post Office Box 1420 Sholo, Arizona 85901 That's the Intelligence Service Post Office Box 1430 Sholo, Arizona 85901 and we'll send those out to you in re return mail. Also remember the other books that are available. Vultures and Eagles Clothing, April 15th. Scarlet and the Beast, which is a very good book. And uh, I've started to read it. And there's a lot of, a lot of information in that book, folks. So uh, those are some of the things that we have right now that could be of uh, use to you. Also, we have, uh, don't forget Bill's uh, food supplies, his tapes, the Zabruder film, the left door video, all of these things that we have uh, for sale. If you have any uh, questions, just call in here at the Research Center at area code 602-337-2562. So we'll go to the phones now and we'll see if we can trade a little bit more information helping each other. And uh, any suggestions that you have, just uh, uh, call in at 602-337-2524. Okay, no phone calls yet. 
ladies and gentlemen, if uh, you have any questions uh, pertaining to some of the items that I have here at Surplus and Stuff, you can call me at 602-337-2975. Good evening, you're on the air. Yes, good evening. Uh, regarding Bill's book, The Old Pale Horse, uh, I am a blind person and I'm calling from New Jersey. Uh, I spoke with Bill all over half a year ago and Bill made two books available to me, available to me, and I told Bill I would attempt to have them recorded so that other blind people uh, throughout the country might have access to his book. Okay, it took a lot longer than I thought. It took three tries, uh, but this is the story. Anyone who's blind and is in the uh, talking book program, which most blind people are, they get talk, talking books from their own regional library, I can tell you this book has been recorded for me. I was just been privately recorded by the Philadelphia branch of the Federal Talking Book Library. And any blind or legally blind person in the country who, who is in the talking book program, if they wish to get a tape to, to loan a cassette tape copy of Bill's book, all they need do is contact their own regional Talking Book Library, no matter where they are in the country, they know where the regional talking book libraries are. Just contact that library and ask that library to order a copy of Bill's book from the Philadelphia Library. They have kept a master tape copy of the private reading they did for me, and they will duplicate a copy for anyone in the country. Uh, um, did I state it clearly? Yes, you did. That would be uh, a real nice uh, mm -hmm. thing that they've done. And that is available for a loan at no charge. Well, that's great. So those of you that uh, are blind, you can get a copy? Yes, just contact your own regional talking book library and ask them to order it from the Philadelphia Library. And I will put this in writing to Bill. I've only had my copy for the past week, but I am going to put it in writing to Bill and give him the official announcement of it. Well, that's great. I'm glad uh, I'm glad of that, and I'm sure he'll be glad hearing from you, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he will. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Bye-bye. Bye now. And anyone that wants to add, uh, order a catalog from Surplus and Stuff, you can order one from Surplus and Stuff. Post Office Box 3300, St. John's, Arizona, 85936. Drop $2 in an envelope, send it to me, and we'll send you a uh, catalog out and return mail. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes. Uh, my reception on my uh, shortwave is a little bad. Uh, I wanted uh, to double-check uh, that deal on uh, storage of the grains with the salt in the bottom. Yes, sir. Uh, could you explain that again? <laughs> Just get you a uh, five-gallon bucket, uh -huh. put you about an inch of uh, plain salt, not iodized, in the bottom of the bucket. Okay. Uh, pour your uh, uh, spaghetti or noodles, rice, what have you, in the bottom into the bucket. Fill it up and put a couple of uh, bay leaves, preferably five full leaves of bay leaf, Four on leaves. top. Okay. Some people use spearmint and uh, put your ceiling lid on top. And that way you'll be able to keep your uh, dried foods there for quite some time. Roughly okay. how long? About at least a year or two? Or? Well, I've had stuff packed away about six years now. Six years. Good deal. Okay, sir. I thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Thank you for calling. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's anything that you can add to the uh, program this evening, uh, here we're going to be talking about all kinds of things. So. Just feel free to call in at 602-337-2524 to this subject matter only. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening. I am listening to your program there about the books and so forth. Yes, sir. And um, I have some books I can recommend. Um, one sort of good books comes out of some Lindsay Publications Incorporated. P.O. Box 538, Bradley, Illinois, 60915-0538. 
They have a good catalog of all sorts of books on metalworking, blacksmithing, building machines, uh, radios, chemistry. Woodworking and so on? Yes. Well, that's real good. We all have to learn a little bit about carpentry, uh, metalworks, things of this nature. If you would, uh, send that uh, uh, in writing, if you would, to me, and uh, I will pass it on to others. I'd appreciate it. And the other one is uh, Atlin Formularies, uh, P.O. Box 95 in Alpena, Arkansas, 72611. They uh, publish Kurt Saxon's uh, The Survivor and Poor Man's James Bond series. No, that's fine. Thank you very much for calling, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> so anyway, folks, if anybody has any recipes that they could pass along or uh, on anything, if you want to send them to me at uh, Surplus and Stuff or here at the Research Center, we'll be glad to pass them on to others. And uh, so we can just work together doing some of these things. Good evening. You're on the air. Here we go again. I don't think so. Now there's just another one of them little twits again, as Bill would say. One of those mindless individuals that can't even think. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, you're on the air. I have got a question about MREs. Go ahead, um, sir. First of all, I'd like to know how you can tell the expiration dates on those and how long they'll last. Okay, uh, if you bought them in a case, there should be uh, a package and an expiration date on them and when the date last was uh, inspected. I have seen these in the green. I have not seen an expiration date. All I've seen are a bunch of numbers and letters and what have you. Mm -hmm. But as far as a date with an abbreviation of a month or anything like that, nothing. Well, generally speaking, most MREs are good for 10 plus years if they're kept in a cool place, sir. Okay, then it'd be pretty safe, like at a gun show or surplus store or something like that. Uh, I, I would say so on the new MREs, yes. Okay, thanks a lot. Goodbye. Goodbye, thank you for calling. Yes, you have to check the packaging dates on some of it, but uh, most MREs are uh, meals ready to eat. If they are of the uh, current manufacturer, they should last uh, for some time. Good evening, you're on the air. Good evening. Uh, I have some uh, suggestions for uh, a snake bite. Uh, echinacea is an herb. You can get it from uh, Penn Herb Company. I've got the number if you want to want me to read it. Wh which number is that, sir? 1-800-523-9971. <clears throat> They'll send you a catalog and you can buy them already made up in pills, you know, into capsules. Uh, doctors who are familiar with this herb say that they could let a rattlesnake bite them and it wouldn't wouldn't bite them as long as they had that herb to fight it. There's another one that is a homeopathic remedy for spider bites. Uh, you can find, of, you can find those at your uh, uh, health food stores, can't you? No, uh, the this one uh, normally you can only get tissue salts at the um, you know, at the uh, health food stores, uh, standard uh, homeopathic, standard homeopathic company in California got an 800 number. You can just call information and get it. Okay. Um, it's called uh, Cubanus. Uh, oh, is that something? It just slipped my mind. Well, uh, if you want to send it to me, I'll pass it on to others if they call in for me. Okay, let me give you one tip on packing food out. All these dehydrated foods uh, that you can use, uh, there's a company called Chilla, P-I-L-L-A. They sell a, a vacuum packer that packs it into bags and sucks a vacuum on it. You can get these whole grains like oat groats, and you put it in a little package and you suck, a, suck it down and seal it. And then right above it, you can put the, the correct amount of water that goes with it and seal that in a bag. And uh, uh, you can take in a bowl of water, pour your oat groats in it, put it in a, 
you know, an insulated mug with a wide mouth on it, cap it, you know, at night before you go to bed in the morning, it's cooked. And you have a tremendous, tremendous uh, food there that will you won't get hungry for four or five hours. Well, that's good. I thank you. You bet. Uh, one other thing. For people in the uh, desert areas where you get stings and bites, and especially the uh, killer bees, there's a homeopathic remedy you can get from uh, Standard Homeopathic in California. It's called APIS, A-P-I-S, 30C Potency. And you get stung by 10, 15 bees. And I used to be a beekeeper, and uh, it just takes away all the pain and swelling. Uh, within five minutes, you don't even know you've been bit unless you touch right on the part where they bit you. You know, it's just, it's sensitive. But um, I had a daughter that got stung by a bunch, and uh, she had that problem where your throat swells shut. Yes. And it stopped that just like uh, magic. Well, that's good. I thank you for calling in, sir. Sure. Bye. Yes, there's a lot of remedies out there that we can use for snake bites and stings because uh, in the field they'll uh, sure be out there with us, but I hope I never get bit by a snake. Snake, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. Uh, got a question for you. Uh, uh, Philip was saying the MREs would last about 10 years. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, the sea rations. I've eaten sea rations that were 20 and 30 years old. Um, do you think that uh, the MREs might last longer than that? Mm, I know they'll last 10 years. That I do know. And yes, uh, I've eaten MC rations along with you when I was in the military that were from World War II in Korea. And uh, as long as they're kept uh, in a cool place and uh, they don't get frozen, uh -huh. and they're not in excessive heat, uh, they will last for quite quite some time. So if you... And the MREs being in uh, uh, sealed uh, aluminum packages rather than cans, uh, you have a lot better chances than the old cans also. So what would you say would be the ideal temperature around uh, 55, 50, something like that? Yes, anything that's... Uh, they're not direct in the sun, uh -huh. where they'll heat up, uh, or they'll freeze. Just keep them moderate. You know, they can be down to uh, 40, 45, 50. Uh, as, as long as you maintain that uh, uh, cold or that uh, heat in storage rooms that uh, uh, where they get warm in the morning and the heat rises with it, that's fine. It, it's the extreme heat that uh, deteriorates your food. Okay. Uh, and one other question. Uh, do you publish uh, like a newsletter uh, of, you know, yourself? No, I, d I don't. Not myself, no. Okay, well, I've been listening to you on Bill's show for a while, and I really do enjoy listening to you. Uh, you really put out some excellent, top-notch uh, information. Well, I, I thank you very much, sir. I, I try, and I've learned uh, a lot from others uh, that had given me that information out of... Uh, friendship in some cases need to know and I'm just trying to pass on what I've learned in my experience over the years uh, uh, to others. Okay, well I, I really do appreciate it and uh, I was just uh, hoping that uh, you might put out like a newsletter or you might have uh, possibly your own show or something like that. I don't have the facilities of uh, putting out a, a newsletter. A lot of people just call me when they're checking for items. Uh, at the store, and uh, a lot of them make up a list of questions, and I can help them at that time. Okay, well, my two bucks is in the mail. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Well, here we are, just passing some more information. Uh, MREs is a good source of food, they're uh, high calories. Uh, dried foods are good. Uh, there's uh, a lot of vacuum sealers on the market, I've seen a couple on TV. I know people that use these vacuum sealers to make uh, different types of uh, trail mixes and uh, uh, prepackaged uh, oatmeal and things of this nature, uh, uh, rice that they can take them with and uh, pack in their backpack. And uh, that way when they set up a uh, mini camp, uh, they can take a, a pre-measured uh, uh, amount of oatmeal, rice or what have you and uh, dump it in their canteen cup and cook it and away they go. So uh, there's uh, 
just a little bit of thinking out there of what you can do and how to do it, and uh, we can all stay for quite a bit uh, in the field with what we have and what we have to eat and what we can find edible in the forest while we're foraging around. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of ways of uh, getting prepared, and I think you know what's coming up. Yes, it is. Swiss America, 1-800-289-2646. They have a lot of ways that they can help you. Give them a call. Explain your situation, what you'd like to do, what you try to do, what your goals are, and I'm sure the, the people there at Swiss America can help discuss with you uh, and make a plan as to what you can do for the future. Because precious metals in its uh, various forms uh, have always retained value. And uh, here again, uh, talking about Grandma uh, pinching her pennies to, to make dollars, and this is what you can do right now. Start saving, put some money away uh, towards your goals, and uh, they can outline different packages for you. Just tell them what you want to do. Uh, myself, uh, when I can, I try and buy the uh, silver rounds. Uh, that's what I can afford. Uh, this is what I buy. I give them away as gifts. Uh, friends of mine and uh, members of my family will be getting those in their uh, uh, Christmas stockings this year instead of gifts because later on they'll be able to use them. So uh, think ahead and uh, give gifts that are long-lasting and worthwhile. And the only way that you can do this is to invest in uh, the precious metals in various forms. Uh, you can go into different types of coins, uh, gold, uh, higher priced uh, uh, silver coins, gold, uh, whatever you're looking for. Or you can buy bags uh, of junk silver and uh, keep it. So there's many ways of getting prepared, and this is one of them. And uh, there's several other ways of getting prepared. But they can help you quite a bit down there at uh, Swiss America. I've learned quite a bit uh, from those folks down there in the several months that uh, I've been associated with them. They've helped me out a bit, pointed me in the right direction, and uh, I know they can help you. So give them a call, ladies and gentlemen, at 1-800-289-2646, and I'm sure they'll be able to help you. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, just watch the market uh, 
from what I understand, the uh, market, uh, stock market dropped again. And uh, uh, then uh, you have to watch what's going on uh, throughout the world as far as uh, the money and mon monetary values are going, uh, how our currency is doing out there. And then you'll better understand, and uh, they do have a booklet. Uh, I'm sure you can ask them for it. And uh, it also explains the financial market and what's happening. So do it now, folks. 1-800-289-2646. Yes, folks, uh, <clears throat> you'll have to excuse me tonight. I'm getting a hoarse throat tonight. And uh, I think maybe I'm get catching a cold or something. Uh, don't forget uh, uh, tomorrow between uh, uh, 2 and 8 down there at the amphitheater in Mesa, Arizona. Go down and see Bill and the others, Red Beckman and all that will be down there. Uh, if you've been thinking about going and quite not made up your mind, it's uh, Friday night. Make up your mind. Uh, get in your car tomorrow and drive over to Mesa, Arizona. And uh, you'll get quite edu education while you're there. So, uh, and the phone numbers, folks, is 602-337-2524. Give us a call tonight. Well, we had one caller. And he's off. Good evening, you're on the air. Good evening. How are you doing tonight? Just fine. How can I help you? Um, I just want to comment on a caller that you had a couple of a uh, few minutes ago. The one that called up and made those stupid noises. Yes. Now, this country's going down the drain. We don't need people like you. So if that's all you're gonna do, just stay at home and bury yourself and wait for them to come and get you. Because that's just going to happen, because you're stupid. Thank you very much. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, just if you have anything to say uh, pertaining to what we're talking about, preparedness or uh, trail hiking or whatever equipment, just give us a call at 602-337-2524. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, uh, Tim Bruce in Texas. Yes, how you doing, Bruce? Not bad. Just got uh, some information from Linda Thompson. She wanted to get out on the air. Uh, she's out of the office right now. ATF has been practicing uh, at Fort Ben Harrison. Um, like last night, there was 80 plus marked and unmarked sheriff's state and federal police cars 
at the Ramada Inn at Pendleton Pike and I-465 in Indianapolis, just south of Fort Harrison. And she's staying gone for right now until uh, they find out just exactly what's going on. But uh, she's all right at the present time. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad a lot of our listeners are uh, uh, sure is feeling the same way. Bruce, how have you been? No problem. Just busy in the Dickens and trying to keep my head low down here, too. And i got some more stuff to see you. Okay, thank you for calling. Okay, guys, bye. Okay, folks, that number to call in is 602-337-2524. Good evening, you're on the air. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, this is Brad from Kansas. Yes, go ahead. Uh, you know, some of the things you were talking about, uh, you know, preserving food and so on. Uh, when you go off into the boonies, here's a little trick that I learned from the Canadians. Uh, mothballs, ideal stuff for keeping the little rodents and the little mice and the little bears from eating your food. Uh, a good little plastic bag uh, with about 12 mothballs in it, placed close uh, to wherever you stack the food, like a pack. I know a lot of people say, well, they're, you know, hang it from the trees and all that, but uh, they have uh, pretty well been convinced up there that mothballs and plastic sacks with a sack open so the mothball aroma comes out will keep just about any animal away from the food. Well, that's good. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. <clears throat> well, there's a good tip that uh, I never thought of myself. See, there's many, many tips out there, and uh, we'll give it a try and see if it works. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Jim. How are you doing tonight? Oh, just fine. I would just like to encourage everyone to take uh, CPR and first aid classes. And don't forget to include the kids, because they can also participate. And you'd be surprised, they can come in real handy. You bet. We've been uh, stressing this uh, on the last couple of shows. Um, they can go to the library, to the local EMT, fire station, what have you, and uh, uh, they can inquire when the next uh, classes will be in their area. Um, and you'd also be impressed with how reasonable it really is. Um, a little bit of research goes a long way. And that's true. Thank you. Yes, so uh, CPR first aid is very beneficial. Uh, it really can help you in uh, times that are coming, and you never know when you're going to have uh, a crisis in your own home or neighborhood or wherever where you can uh, pitch in and uh, help your neighbor. Good evening. You're on the air. Wow, can't believe it. This is Craig up in Michigan. How are you doing? Pretty good. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I got a couple tips. Uh, for starting a fire, yeah, everybody's talking about the waterproof matches and all this stuff. It's pretty hard to beat a propane lighter. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're cheap, and you can you can put a couple of them in different pockets in your pack, whatever. And if you have to, they make a expedient hand grenade. Um, and another thing, a lot of the books will say about the matches, where uh, to dip them in a paraffin. Mm -hmm. That's a bad deal. It just softens them up. You'll never get them lit. Well, I, I did it. That, that does not work. Well, I've tried some that did and some that didn't myself. Uh, a propane uh, lighter or match is, is fine. You have to be careful with them. You have to buy some good ones. Uh, there's a lot of cheap ones out there, and uh, they don't last that long, and a lot of them... Uh, uh, the tops come off and the wheels break and so on and so forth. So uh, if you're going to go into propane lighters, ladies and gentlemen, just be careful and buy a good one and keep it wrapped up so that the uh, the top part uh, where the roller and striker is uh, don't get damaged. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But watch those matches, though, you know, when you need it, it crumbles in front of you. Yeah. Yes, I've, I've been through that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your tip. Yep. Any other tips out there? And uh, we had a tip the other the other night when we had a call in. Uh, don't forget bicycles and uh, get some good bikes and uh, with solid tires and uh, away you go. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, I was uh, calling on that vacuum sealer. Uh, talking about while ago using it to preserve food. I got a, a Prolock Decosonic uh, from Daymark. And it's like forty nine ninety nine, and uh, it has a jar sealer with it. 
Do you have your radio on, sir? Huh? Do you have your radio on? Uh, you want to turn it down? I can hear background noise. But, uh, yeah. Uh, well, the number is one eight hundred seven two nine nine thousand. And that's for the food sealer. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Don't forget, folks. Uh, when you call in, uh, if you have a radio, uh, turn it down if you're on the phone, uh, waiting to come on the air because uh, we can hear the background noise and it gets very annoying and you can't uh, hardly understand. Good evening, you're on the air. Yeah, I have a, a tip for emergency. Um, or, you know, if you kind of pass out or if you have a situation where that person goes into a shock, you can use an uh, uh, acupuncture technique by pressing very hard between the lip and the nose. And that can bring the body uh, back into uh into reaction and brings up the blood pressure and helps to uh, prevent the shock from going into more serious, uh, you know, life-threatening situation. All right, sir. Where'd you learn that one? Acupuncture. Acupuncture. Mm-hmm. And also, if you have a fever, um, you know, 102, 104 fever, you could um, you could also bleed the um, fingertip. Not really the tips, but. If you could imagine a line being drawn along the bottom of a nail and along the side of a nail where the two lines intersect, you can bleed that. Little, just a little, you know, teeny little prick, and that excitation to the body can help break even. We're great children. All right, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Well, there's a lot of things to learn. There's a lot of books out there. Don't forget, go to your friendly library and. Uh, health food store. There's a lot of books on information of what we're talking about tonight. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, this is Richard from Garner, Texas. How are you doing? Just fine. Just a tip on MREs. We talked about shelf life. All I know about MREs is, is when not to eat them. All right, go ahead. They're all vacuum sealed. If there's any air whatsoever in any of the packages that are enclosed in the MRE, then you should discard them. Now, wait a minute, on um, MREs, uh, are you talking about the dehydrated? Well, the dehydrated, all the all the packages that are packaged in the individual pack, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, yes, you'll, you'll, uh, uh, you're talking about the LERP rations, if it's uh, uh, dehydrated or vacuum packed. Right, and most of my uh, mm-hmm. uh, beef stew and all that stuff is all, you know, they're, it's sucked out of it by the vacuum. If yeah. there's any uh, squishiness to it, if there's any air in it, then you have uh, bacteria growth in it and it should be discarded. I think you're getting the between the LERP rations and the MREs uh, uh, mixed up because MREs are just a sealed package and uh, they are, uh, they're not vacuum sealed, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, the old LERP rations, uh, which are still some of those around, where you add water to them. Uh, yes, those were all vacuum sealed. Okay. Uh, there is a difference uh, in the two. The new MREs came out in the uh, uh, early 80s. Uh huh. And the uh, LERP rations came out during Vietnam, sir. Okay. Well, I just wanted to let you know that you know if, if you do have a bunch of air in it, then it probably wouldn't be a good idea to go ahead and eat that. That's that's a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Okay, 602-337-2524. Do you have any other information you want to pass on this evening? Uh, just give us a call and uh, we'll talk about it. Good evening, you're on the air. Hi, Bob. I have a couple questions to ask you. Uh, I believe a lot of Bill Cooper, what he says in that, but I have another question for you. I got a buddy here in Pennsylvania that... Uh, he, you know, he's going up all kinds of stuff you know, in the militia and that, trying to get stuff trained and all that. But another thing is, you got to have money to do this, to get guns and that. But he doesn't want to work. We tried everything to get him a job. So he, you know, he, he doesn't want to go out into society to get work, to get, like, store stuff. No, he doesn't want to help himself, does he? No, that's what we're trying to get him to go, get a job. Well, if he can't get up and have enough esteem to uh, get out and do what he has to do, well, uh, I'll check that one off. Do you have a radio on? Uh, no. 
You got an awful buzz in your noise in your telephone. I'm on a cordless. Oh. Uh, that's another thing you don't want to do is uh, call on a cordless phone uh, because it does create a lot of noise. Okay, anything else? That's it. I just wanted to get your opinion on that. Well, if a person can't stand up and help himself, there's nothing you can do. All right. You, you can try and pick him up, but if he wants to sit down, just let him sit down. All right, thanks. All right. Bye-bye. That's another thing that gets uh, a little bit annoying, folks. Do not call on a cordless phone because uh, they seem not to have the power or something, and uh, they get a lot of buzzing and humming. And, uh, here again, it uh, gets very irritating. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, sir. I'm here in Houston. I was calling to see if you had any information on night vision equipment that uh, would be good to follow up on. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I've checked into some of the night night vision that's out there. Uh, to me, it's been unsatisfactory. So uh, most of the Russian stuff I've seen, I've not been real real uh, pleased with. And I didn't know if there were some outlets for American-made products. Uh, there is there is some, but uh, I haven't gotten into it. Uh, they're quite expensive. Uh, unless three or four people get together to buy one piece of equipment, it would be about the only way you could do it. Yeah. Uh, some of the stuff that's out there has a lot of fish eye in it and uh, out around and uh, does not have uh, the clearness, clearness of uh, the uh, optics. And to me, uh, uh, it's been useless. Mm -hmm. I've uh, noticed, I've used in the past, um, like the Steiner, Night Hunter binoculars, and they're uh, eight by fifty-six, and they have um, a very good resolution at night, almost as good as some of the the Russian junk. You know, it uh, it'll. Steiner, they're very good binoculars. Yeah, you can get a very good resolution uh, with uh, a decent amount of ambient light. Um, the other thing I was interested in, you guys have been talking about, it, has been the. Um, but, uh, storing grains and stuff like that, um, and that uh, I was interested in vacuum packing and, and your salt idea sounds very, very good. Also, I've never heard of that. Well, it works uh, quite well. Are there any books that you can resource for that kind of information? Uh, there's uh, different books, like I was saying earlier, in your um, health food stores. Um, uh, go to the library and there's books on canning and preserving and you'll pick up tips there. Uh, this tip I've, I've learned a long time ago. It's an old pioneer trick and uh, it does work well. Okay. Anything else I could help you with? Uh, thanks for having the show. We uh, There's a lot of us here in the Houston area that appreciate it. Okay, thank you for calling. Thank you. We have time for a couple more uh, calls, folks. 602-337-2524. Uh, Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, can you uh, provide some information about um, what type of uh, backpacks, uh, butt packs, that kind of stuff? Yes, well, we've talked about Alice packs uh, before, uh, and uh, the military butt packs are more comfortable to carry, in, in my estimation, and uh, others uh, share the same view. You can buy an Alice pack with or without a frame, uh, a frame you'd want to keep uh, around for later for carrying heavier objects than just your pack. Question for the pack becomes uh, detachable? Yes. If you want, uh, send in for the catalog and you can see the items there. Great. I Questions about maps. What type of maps should, uh, should, should I start collecting if I wanted to? Uh... Well, uh, what you'd want to do is go, if you have a map store, uh, there's one in Phoenix. Uh, it's a, a map store and they have uh, uh, topo maps of the entire state. And uh, you can pick out the topo maps uh, uh, or land topographic maps. Uh, of your area and the area you want to go to and uh, I'm sure they can get you other states if you go uh, and check this out. And the topo maps would probably be the uh, best test? Yes, it gives you elevations, shows you uh, waterways, mountain areas, uh, elevations and such. Thanks, Tim. Okay. 
Uh, folks, uh, you want to don't want to forget uh, Bill's offers on his uh, book, Behold a Pale Horse, at eighteen fifty for non-members, fifteen fifty for members. Also, ten dollars uh, for the ATF and the uh, ADL papers. Uh, and these are all postpaid, folks. Uh, make your checks out to Annie. Send them to the Intelligence Service at uh, P.O. Box 1430, Shiloh, Arizona, 85901. And anyone wants to talk to me, they can call me at 602-337-2975. If you want a copy of the catalog, you can send it to Surplus and Stuff, P.O. Box 3300, St. John's, Arizona, 85936. And don't forget, folks, if you can, get to Mesa, Arizona tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon. Uh, see Bill, Red Beckman, and others that will be there, and you'll be getting a good education uh, for your money. So, uh, you folks, uh, good night. God bless you all, and God save the Republic. Happy old moon, you've been hundreds of times.